Well, this is my third attempt. Hopefully, uh, audio is better this time, and I don't have the camera upside down. Or anyway, the camera's upside down, but I've turned it over so the video is inverted. But anyway, whatever. Um, I was going to make this video kind of a walk around, uh, show you my Cozy 4. <clears throat> it's built per plans with the exception of a bunch of little mods. Um, so anyway, I'll start at the front. The, uh, the pitot tube, uh, I did have longer, but I went ahead and cut it off. Uh, it still works pretty well. The front ballast area, I carry 50 pounds of lead shot in here uh, when I'm solo uh, to keep the CG. Um, just forward of the aft most, uh, so about 101.5 inches, I think those typically were. Uh, I've got the CG when I'm flying solo. Uh, there's the covers here, and uh, those are pretty close to plans, except for the larger canard cover. Per plans, that's usually one solid piece, but um, several folks have started taking those off and making them separate. I think the Velocity folks were the probably the first or earlier ones to do this. and. So it gives it quite a bit more room for other avionics. Um, I use cam locks to keep these covers on, and I've got the little uh, lip there that catches the front, slides on. Uh, same with this one. There's a little lip that grabs here, two cam locks, and then four cam locks hold this cover on. Uh, inside here, um, Master brake reservoir. I'm running the 8606 fluid. I did start it out with the dot five, but I flushed it out and went to 8606. It's just easier to get a hold of and more economical. The dot five has gotten stupidly expensive and less place is uh, stock it anymore. So there's the hat of hers with the pedostatic tube coming in. Um, I've got the setup so I can balance or level the unit. Um, cover over the nose gear actuator. Uh, Dennis Ullman pedals. I've got taper pins to help take up some of the slop out of the pedals. Um, and as you know, or some of you probably know, is the rudders are independent of each other. Uh, so you can, you can push both rudders at the same time. Uh, the brakes actuate when you push a rudder to a certain point and then it actuates the brake. Uh, my canard didn't have the foil installed for the glide slope and VOR antennas, so I've made these, um, it's called a double bazooka design antennas for the glide slope and VOR, and so they're just laying in here. Um, the Navcom, I've got an IFD 540, and its antenna is closer than six feet of cable length away from the unit, so I have to have an attenuator to reduce the uh, signal into the front end of the NAVCOM. This is the ADS-B receiver, it's dual band, the 978 and 1090 megahertz ADS-B in, and here's another little um, double bazooka antenna for that. Here's the Dynon uh, GPS-2020 satellite receiver. Um, these hinge pins pull out and uh, release the front cover or the, the instrument panel cover and there's five screws that hold the, or four screws that hold the cover on as well as the, the pins. Uh, in here I've got a vertical power for non-critical uh, electronics and avionics. Uh, they break out into these terminal strips. I could easily replace the vertical power with uh, discrete fuses if, if necessary. All the essential uh, for flight avionics are powered through discrete breakers. Um, I'm using the Bob Knuckles Z101 uh, configuration. Uh, so if you've got specific questions about that, uh, look at Bob Knuckles Air Electric Connection book and I think he's got the Z101 posted online. Uh, under here, uh, the air ink module, the Skyview bus uh, display, Wi-Fi, uh, USB panel mount for the uh, 
plates and charts are on the USB cards. I've got three of the button panels for the autopilot, barrow, and uh, radio. Um, I've got the PS Engineering audio panel, the SDS controller, and the Avidyne IFD540. The canard was installed uh, with the template G, I think was the most recent one, and it's the, the shortened canard um, per plans. I've got the belly brake underneath, uh, typical nose gear, uh, cozy girl strikes or extended strikes give you a little bit of room. Normally they only come up to about where the handle is. Gives you a little bit more room. Um, I don't have a lot of the cosmetic stuff done in, you know, the interior. Um, hopefully I'll have done next month. And uh, all of those wires covered up. And I'm going to relocate the headset jacks. I want the headset jacks up front for the pilot co-pilot. And I'm going to put USB power ports and the headset jack so the rear passengers can reach in the back. So there's the SDS fuel pumps, uh, Holly 40 micron, 100 gallon an hour filter. Um, this is a dual gang fuel selector because with the electronic fuel injection, it needs the return fuel switched back to the source tank. Um, just a throttle lever. The mixture control is electronic. Um, Let's see. Uh, I've got lights for the uh, the fault for the SDS system. Um, I did have one hooked up for the O2 sensor. I've removed power for that. It just wasn't working that good for the O2 sensor. Uh, let's see what else. Um, most of these switches over here feed the vertical power unit, and then uh, some of the others have uh, the the full current load going through them. Uh, eyeball sockets for the air, uh, AC ELT control, uh, window to see the nose wheel coming up and going down. Um, here's where the essential bus is happening. Got the diode for isolation, got a relay to um, activate it individually. I got the belt drive and pad mount alternators feeding this um let's see if a fuse blows it'll indicate there easily um let's see on the switch i've got the pitch up down roll left and right um, hat switch uh, push to talk trigger and then there's an indented autopilot disconnect release um, canopy switch lock um, I've got um, a magnetic switch to detect when the canopy is closed and then another switch to detect that it's locked and then there's a widget on the panel to show that it's closed and locked and then also I've got the uh, uh, gear up and down um, widget for the uh, dynon panel and let's see, moving into the back, in the hellhole, I've got the SDS ECU, the Dynon EMS220, AC ELT, and the autopilot servo is mounted underneath that little deck back there and connects to uh, the torque tube arm on this side. EarthX battery, um, some of the bolts that I've got going through there are dual purpose, so for instance, on the uh, master switch or master relay, those two bolts hold the um, manifold block on for the fuel line vent tubes. And I'll show you that here in a second. So, uh, let's see. Do, do, do. I've got the uh, fuel drain sump, bleeding edge, one at the plans, and then I've, I've fared this in. I've got the wide uh, leg covers. Verlons required per plans. Um, a VO TSO strobe position light. Um, cam lock, not cam lock, uh, click bonds. So there's no uh, screw heads sticking out. No rudder pedal, or the rudder pedal, rudder bell horn. Uh, it's hidden rudder bell horn. 
trailing edge fences, uh, more click bonds. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So here's the block I was telling you about, just uh, two bolts going through holding it on. Also holding the master, or the starter relay on the other side. Top mount oil cooler, uh, air equipped 466 AN8 with 45 degree bends, no 90s, and that improves the oil flow. Um, here's kind of a kludged uh, sensor mount using a couple of ADL clamps and an adapter, and that works pretty good. That's for the oil pressure. Uh, when I change oil, I disconnect this and I make a little aluminum uh, channel that drains the oil out of the cooler into here. It's an 18 row cooler, quite a bit larger than what the plans dictate. Um, the little, uh, connection for the rudder cable here. I've used Thermotech um, heat insulation to protect the wing roots. Um, let's see, I had to modify this part right here because it had cracked, so I put a 90 degree bend and uh, backed it up with uh, black RTV and hopefully that'll hold up. The other one, I think 130 hours and it, uh, it cracked right here. Let's see, SDS uh, throttle body, Canon filter, belt drive alternator, pad drive alternator, coils are mounted where the mags go. Saber 8 inch prop extension, Kato prop, um, 60 pound Bosch injectors, uh, heat muff works pretty good, uh, breather tube for the crankcase comes out here. Um, uh, two map sensors for the SDS system, one map sensor for Dynon, fuel pressure regulator, spin on adapter. And let's see, here's the trim, roll trim. And I think that's about it. Oh, yeah, one more goodie I just got today. Um, I got a dynamic balancer. Only about $400 with tax and shipping. So anyway, that'll, that'll go on right there. I did have it statically balanced by my neighbor, um, but at static RPM, I'm at 2230. And it was okay, but I cruised around 25, 2600 RPM and had a little bit of vibration. So uh, that's all the weight that was in there. That's going to come out, and then I'll put the balancer on and see how it goes. So anyway, um, hope. Oh, yeah, one more thing. I do have the uh, cold air sump, uh, superior cold air sump. So it's got the long tubes, and it keeps the oil outside of, of or keeps air cooler by not having it heated by the oil and that's one reason I went with the larger 18 row cooler so anyway hope that answers some of your questions thanks